I've been getting some wonderful Excel questions from my community, so I thought it'd be a great idea to answer a few of them in this short video. First up is Barbara. Barbara asked, I get errors when I fill a formula to the right if the formula uses a table column name. So what she's referring to is when we put in a proper table, like insert table, and then we write a formula that references one of those columns. When we fill that formula to the right, it seems like our formulas break. And what's really going on there is that Excel is treating that column reference as relative, which means as you click and drag to fill right, Excel is updating that column name in your formula. And when that's not what we want, when it's unexpected, it's like, what's going on? So the answer is, instead of clicking and dragging the formula to the right, what we wanna do is copy the formula and paste it into cells to the right instead, or use the fill right command. For whatever reason, the treatment here is inconsistent. In other words, when we click and drag, Excel treats the column reference as relative, breaking my formula, but if I copy paste or use the fill right command, Excel treats that column reference as absolute, and that's exactly what we want. All right, next question is from Matt. Matt says, Jeff, I had seen the subtotal function used on financial statements, but didn't really understand the coding differences between code nine or code 109. So first I'll answer your question and I'll give you a reference in case you're not familiar with the subtotal function. Here's the answer. The subtotal function with code nine will exclude rows that have been hidden with a filter. Whereas code 109 will exclude hidden rows regardless of how they were hidden, including setting the row height to zero or just selecting hide or using the outline groups feature. Again, if you're not familiar with subtotal function, check out the link below. Next question is from Kent. Kent says, Jeff, can you create an amortization schedule using the new sequence function? Kent, yes, yes you can and it's totally awesome because then it dynamically adjusts to the number of periods in the, in the amortization schedule. The sequence function is one of the new dynamic array formulas and it is a function that can return many results. Hold on, Jeff, wait, what do you mean? I've been doing Excel for 20 years. When I write one formula, it returns one result into the one cell. So what do you mean one formula can return multiple results? Well, that's the deal. There's a set of functions in Excel that can return multiple results. And when a formula returns multiple results, those results spill out into adjacent cells. The sequence function is one of those, and it's an amazing function for help building a dynamic amortization schedule. And the good news is I have a full step-by-step -step written tutorial that shows you all about it. Check out the link below. Next question is from Joanne. Joanne says, Jeff, we have a list and it has the employee ID and name on the first row then a new row for spouse, then a variable number of new rows for any dependents. We need to somehow combine them into a single row. Okay, so here's the deal. That task used to be fairly challenging and we might use something like a macro or custom VBA code to accomplish that. Nowadays, it's pretty straightforward with the use of Power Query. The good news is I have a full step-by-step -step written tutorial that you can check out if you'd like to see the specific steps for how to do that in Power Query. Just check out the link below. All right, next question is from Sherry. Sherry says, help me get QuickBooks data into Excel. So here's the deal. A lot of us use QuickBooks as an accounting system. And so then the question is, what if a report that I need can't be built with QuickBooks? Well, often that data ends up in Excel so that we can then build the type of report that we want. So the first option is simply exporting a CSV file out of QuickBooks, download it to your computer, and then use Power Query to pull in that CSV file and format it as you need. The good news about spending the time to do that with Power Query is that future periods, it's just a one-click refresh. But there are other third-party plugins that plug into Excel and help automate this idea of pulling data out of QuickBooks and into Excel. So two of the add-ins are Genius Sheets and Excel FSM, and they have different pros and cons to each, so definitely you wanna check them out using the links below. Thank you so much for these questions. And you know what, if you have Excel questions, hey, let me know. Post them in the comments below, I'll review them, and hopefully we'll be able to answer those on the next video. Thanks so much for joining me, have a great day. This video is a production of Excel University. 